Welcome, Mr. Sutton here, bringing you the Precal Honors 510 Extra Practice Number 3 Solutions on Pythagorean Identities. For this problem, there isn't really much we can do other than uh, distributing this cosine out in the very beginning. So that gives us cosine secant minus cosine squared of theta. Now secant, we know, that's really 1 over cosine. Um, so we can immediately cancel out these two cosines leaving us with just 1 minus cosine squared. And 1 minus cosine squared, well, I can rearrange my sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1 identity to get that pattern. If I subtract cosine squared from both sides, we see that that is equivalent to sine squared. Uh, so this expression over here, then, is just going to be sine squared. On this problem, there isn't really much we can do beyond foiling this out. At some point, we're going to have to turn everything into sine and cosine. But let me get everything multiplied out before I bother with that. Uh, so I'm going to have cosecant secant uh, plus cosecant of x minus cotan secant minus cotan of x. And let's see, there's nothing that immediately is going to cancel out here. So let me turn everything into sine and cosine and see what happens. Over here, we've got 1 over sine of x times 1 over cosine of x. Next, this is 1 over sine of x. Here, this is going to be cosine of x over sine of x times 1 over cosine of x. So that might be helpful. Um, and then over here, we have cotan becoming cosine of x over sine of x. So where do we go at this point? Well, one thing we immediately see is that we have a cosine and a cosine that could probably cancel out. Now, I'm very tempted to cancel these out, um, but down the road, we're just going to have to put that cosine back in the denominator because you're going to see that down the road, really the only thing that we can do at this point is get a common denominator and merge all these fractions together. So our common denominator is going to be sine of x, cosine of x. Um, so I'm not going to cancel these cosines just yet because I've already got my common denominator. So I can rewrite this as 1 over sine of x, cosine of x, plus I need to multiply this by cosine over cosine. So this is going to be cosine of x over sine cosine. This one is already exactly the way it needs to be. We'll just write minus cosine of x over sine cosine. This next one needs a cosine, so that'll be cosine squared over sine cosine. And where can we go from here? Well, these two middle terms are exactly the same, except that one's positive and one's negative. So those can cancel. So that means that we're just left, if we uh, merge these into one big fraction, with 1 minus cosine squared over sine of x cosine of x. Now we can go a little bit further. Uh, cosine squared, that's part of a Pythagorean identity. We have sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And if we rearrange this, we can write sine squared equals 1 minus cosine squared. That means that I can rewrite this fraction as sine squared over sine of x cosine of x. And that's nice because one of these sines is going to cancel. So that just leaves us with sine of x over cosine of x. And we know that that is equivalent to tan of x. For this problem, we've got some fractions going on. Um, now, in terms of things we could do, algebraically, we could get a common denominator and try adding these together. I think that's just going to make the numerator worse, though. One other thing we can try is turning things into sine and cosine to see if that makes a difference. So secant, I know, is really 1 over cosine. Cosecant is really 1 over sine. So if I rewrite the fraction like that, now I can do my little same change flip trick. We've got 1 over cosine times sine over 1, which we can just rewrite as sine over cosine. And that's really nice uh, because sine over cosine is just tangent. So is this sine over cosine. Well, hey, what's tan of x plus tan of x? That's just going to be 2 tan of x. We can just add them like variables. On this problem, uh, half the difficulty is figuring out how to get started. There's so many directions you could go on this one. For example, you could try changing secant squared into something with a, a tan squared in it, because we have that identity. Um, we also could split this up into two fractions. and Another option is trying to merge tan and cotan into one single term up here. That's actually the option I went for to try to simplify the numerator because I know that cotan is really 1 over tan. So I feel like I ought to be able to combine these pretty easily. So to do that, I need a common denominator, which means I have to multiply tan by tan over tan. 
So that'll be tan squared of theta over tan of theta. And now I can add these together. So this will be tan squared plus 1 over tan. Still have secant squared on the bottom. Uh, at this point, I know that I have an identity where we have 1 plus tan squared equals secant squared. So I'm going to go ahead and replace tan squared theta plus 1 with secant squared. And, and now things are starting to come together. We see we ought to be able to do something with this. So if I divide all this fraction here by secant squared, that's really like multiplying by 1 over secant squared. So I can essentially just put this big secant squared in the denominator of this fraction up here, like so. And when we do that, we now see that these secant squareds cancel nicely, leaving us with 1 over tan of theta, which we know is equivalent to cotan of theta. To simplify this problem, we're going to start, as we always do, with thinking about Pythagorean identities. So the secant squared minus 1 looks like I ought to be able to swap it out for something. I know that 1 plus tan squared equals secant squared. So then if I do secant squared minus 1, that's going to be the same as just having tan squared. So I can replace this whole parentheses with tan squared. Now, tan squared is really sine squared over cosine squared. Cosine squareds cancel. This is just going to leave us with a final answer of sine squared. To simplify this trigonometric expression, we're going to start with some good old-fashioned algebra. When we have something plus something squared in a parentheses, or something minus something, we have this shortcut over here, a squared plus or minus 2ab plus b squared. So that's what we're going to do to expand these two things. So for this first one, we've got sine squared plus 2 sine of x cosine of x plus cosine squared. And over here, we've got sine squared again minus 2 sine of x cosine of x plus cosine squared of x. Simplifying at this point, the 2 sine of x cosine of x and the negative version of that are going to cancel. And I notice that I have two, sine of the, two of these sine squareds and two of these cosine squareds. So we've got 2 sine squared plus 2 cosine squared. Now, one thing we could do at this point is factor out that common factor of 2, leaving us with just sine squared plus cosine squared inside. And that might look familiar to you because sine squared plus cosine squared, we know, has a value of 1. So this is really just 2 times 1, which of course is just 2. To simplify this problem, there's no Pythagorean identities that we can quickly apply right now. And also, uh, algebraically, all we can really do is just multiply all this stuff together. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to start by distributing cosine of theta to this first parentheses. So this is going to be cosine minus cosine squared. Next, I'm going to go ahead and foil this whole thing out. So we've got first, that's cosine times 1 is just going to be cosine of theta. And then we've got cosine of theta times secant of theta. Next, we have negative cosine squared minus cosine squared secant of theta. And where can we go from here? I guess there's a few different directions. We could try combining some like terms. Um, but one thing I do notice, secant, I know that's 1 over cosine. So let me actually make those 1 over cosines and see if I can cancel a few things out before I start adding anything together. So definitely this cosine and this cosine cancel, leaving us with just one for this term. And over here, one of these cosines is going to cancel with this cosine. So this is just a regular cosine. So we've got cosine of theta plus 1 minus cosine squared minus cosine. And at this point, the dust settles a little bit. We notice we have positive and negative version of cosine. So those can cancel, leaving us with just 1 minus cosine squared of theta. And this should look kind of familiar because we have an identity, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. If we, do, uh, sub if we subtract cosine squared from both sides, we see that sine squared and 1 minus cosine squared are actually the same thing. So this whole expression we can just convert to sine squared of theta.